The Elmond Forest is a vast woodland containing farms, mines, lakes, rivers, vineyards, human settlements, and more. Having a calm and serene appearance at first look, it serves as the starting zone for all human characters who begin their journey in Northshire Valley. And it is not uncommon to also run into night elves, dwarves, and gnomes who have trekked vast landscapes to quest in the forest, typically from levels 1 to 12. A great introduction to World of Warcraft, the Elwyn Forest encompasses so many of those well-loved fantasy elements. A medieval-type world setting, magical powers and forces, good versus evil, and even a little romance thrown in if you actually read the quests. Lush with tall trees, wooden fences, stone and dirt paths, wooden and brick homes with blue roofing, dimly lit lanterns, and more, you may find yourself lost in immersion inside this forest. Located just outside the gates of Stormwind City, the capital city for the humans of the Alliance, the Elwyn Forest also borders Duskwood to the south, the Red Ridge Mountains to the east, and Westfall to the west. There are no flight paths in the Elwyn Forest, so new adventurers will mostly be traveling by foot. Notable locations inside the forest include Goldshire, with its famous Lion's Head Inn, the Jasperlode and Fargo Deep Mines, Stone Cairn Lake, the Eastvale Logging Camp, the Tower of Azora, and Westbrook Garrison, to name a few. While Goldshire is the largest settlement in the forest, the Eastvale Logging Camp prides itself as the epicenter for the lumber industry. There, you'll find many hardworking peasants laboring away night and day collecting wood. Eastvale is also where humans can train their riding skills for normal and epic horse mounts. Although in close proximity to Stormwind City and under the watchful eye of city guards, Travelers ought to stick to the main roads to avoid certain peril. For within the forest lie certain dangers. Cobalts have infiltrated the mines. Murlocs have moved inland to occupy certain lakes and rivers. And the Defias Brotherhood, a group of red mask-wearing bandits, have become an increasingly grown menace within the forest. Jared's Landing in particular, a dock on the southern bank of the forest, was overtaken by the Defias Brotherhood, used to smuggle large quantities of contraband, from Clavens Tower in Red Ridge to Westfall. The Defias Dockmaster keeps a watchful eye over the operation, while Defias rogues and bandits patrol the area. As for the wildlife within the forest, adventurers must also be wary of bears, boars, spiders, and wolves all of which are hostile outside the boundaries of Northshire Valley. Key inhabitants like Marshal McBride, Marshal Dugan, and Guard Thomas are dedicated to keeping the forest free of danger. An often overlooked citizen of Stormwind who covers a lot of ground, patrolling the four starting zone areas for humans, the Elwyn Forest, Red Ridge, Westfall, and Duskwood, is Antonio Pirelli, a traveling salesman a merchant of exotic goods who will often break to rest upon reaching a certain destination, he has made it clear that he's not too fond of walking through Duskwood. If you catch him at the right moment, you may find several uncommon, limited quantity items available for sale. It is thought that Antonio is related to Silvio Pirelli, a traveling salesman that could be found in the culling of Stratholme from Wrath of the Lich King. If you see Antonio around, please send him my regards. Within the forest, you may encounter a number of helpful resources to aid you in your journeys. Linen and wool cloth typically drop from humanoid mobs. Peacebloom, silverleaf, and earthroot grow throughout the land, fresh for picking. Ruined leather scraps and light leather may be skinned off corpses of wildlife in the zone. And copper veins are present for mining, most notably inside mines and around cliff areas. With several lakes and rivers in the area, adventurers who are new to fishing may find that the Elwyn Forest is a great place to start. Visit your nearest fishing trainer for some beginner tips and tricks. Grab yourself a fishing pole, and don't forget to grab lures as well. You can easily find a body of water to cast your line in, but always be sure that the surrounding area is clear. You don't want to get ambushed while fishing. And while you're at it, save the fish that you collect. In addition to that and any other meat that you've collected along the way, you could surely level up your cooking skill pretty easily. Be sure to visit the cooking trainer, Tomas, inside the Lion's Pride Inn. You'll find a plethora of quests in the Elwyn Forest, and there are undoubtedly some that stand out more than others. Perhaps most famous is a wanted poster from Westbrook Garrison, close to the Westfall border, 
pleading to find an adventurer who can acquire a huge knoll paw from the villainous hogger, an elite river paw knoll chieftain. Along with his river paw tribe, he is loosely connected with the Defias Brotherhood. Adventurers are advised to seek a group of friends before tackling this dangerous endeavor. Other notable quests involve cleaning up the Fargo Deep Mine, which has been overrun with kobolds who really don't want you to take their candles. Goldtooth is a notable named mob inside the mine, involved in a quest chain asking you to retrieve a necklace. And speaking of retrieving items, competing pumpkin patch owners who reside in the Elwyn Forest are at odds over the Brackwell's prize-winning pig Princess, who keeps eating Ma Stonefield's crops at the Stonefield farm. Retrieving Princess's brass collar is another notable quest that comes to mind in the Elwyn Forest. And let us not pass over the hub of the Eastvale logging camp, where you are first greeted by guard Thomas, followed by the inhabitants of the camp, requiring your aid. Collecting bundles of wood, helping purge dangerous wildlife, retrieving bandanas from fallen Defias are all just a few objectives that you will be tasked with. Even assisting in finding lost guards, or what's left of them. Not too far from the Eastvale logging camp is the Tower of Azora, a small mage tower run by a group of servants of Azora, most of which appear to be gnomes. The Archmage of Azora, Theocritus, presides over these servants. The denizens of the Tower of Azora are constantly at ends with the inhabitants of the Tower of Ilgalar in Red Ridge Mountains, who is ruled over by an evil sorcerer named Morganth. You'll find that the two towers often spy on one another through the use of magic. Inside the Tower of Azora are several vendors, as well as the artisan enchanter for the Alliance. You'll also find, as you scale the spiral stairs towards the top, paintings on the walls, shelves of experiments, alchemy vials, books, fossils, and more. I mentioned romance earlier, and that's a side quest involving Tommy Jo Stonefield and Maybelle McClure, who are in love with each other but must see each other in secrecy because of an eternal feud between their two families. With the help of you, the adventurer, and his grandmother, Grandma Stonefield, you can help them by following a quest chain that involves engaging in combat with murlocs, eventually leading to the concoction of an invisibility potion. And let us not overlook the very beginning of your journey in Northshire Valley, home to the prominent Northshire Abbey, an unmistakable structure with illustrious stained glass windows and home to the religious order, the Brotherhood of Northshire. It is with Marshal McBride and Deputy Willem that you will begin your travels, assisting in culling the cobalt infestation, cutting down numbers of wild wolves, and meeting your first members of the Defias Brotherhood. And let us not forget about Millie Osworth, who is in dire need of someone to help retrieve buckets of her coveted grapes. There are many adventures to be had in the Elwyn Forest. Next time you are traveling in the area, be sure to take a moment and enjoy the scenery, the ambiance, the music, and most of all, one of the most iconic, nostalgic zones in all of World of Warcraft Classic. Hey everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video that I put together in an attempt to appreciate the beauty of the Elwyn Forest. I put a lot of time and effort into this video, but it truly was a labor of love. I'd like to do this with more zones in WoW Classic and perhaps beyond that in the future. So if you like the format of this video and you want to see more, please hit the thumbs up button and suggest what zone I should do next in the comment section below. Since the Elwyn Forest is the starting zone for humans, I was thinking of either showcasing a Horde starting zone, like Durotar or Tears Fall Glades, or perhaps even Mulgor, since it's kind of like the Elwyn Forest, it's a vast open landscape where you could feel more in tune with nature. It's up to you guys though, so please let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and check out all of my socials below. I want to send a huge thank you out to all of my Patreon supporters who help fuel this content and allow us to offset some of our living expenses so that we could keep doing what we're doing. Be sure to check out patreon.com slash warcraftbrew if you're interested in joining the party and learning about what perks are associated with the membership. Thank you again for watching this video, and maybe I'll catch you during one of my live streams. Take care.